Hello beautiful soul, I'm Vicki Howie of ChakraBoosters.com and today I'm coming to you from beautiful Paris, France and yes, this is the Eiffel Tower. So I'm right over a train station, you might hear the train, I'm near a bunch of cars, I've heard ambulances today, you may hear people, you may hear all sorts of noises, but I thought it was worth it for this view. So let's just take it from here. Today I'm going to cover the five rights of your heart chakra. Now these are rights that really fulfilled needs that you had particularly in your fourth year of childhood because that's the strongest developmental year for the heart chakra. So if you find that any of these rights aren't really being exercised, that you aren't exercising them in your life, claim it now. You can. Simply by leading your body into doing it, you can start to let your body know it's totally okay. Not only is it okay, but it's super cool. Okay? So the first right of the heart chakra is pretty obvious, and that is to love and be loved. We all have an essence of love. The heart chakra is our center chakra. It's the center of our field. So when our chakras are balanced, meaning when we're all aligned, front, back, left, right, up, down, perfectly aligned. We are in the center of our heart energy. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So we are love. And yet in our culture, it's not always appropriate to express love or people tell us that it isn't or we feel that it isn't. So what I want you to be aware of is how are you curbing or how are you changing your behaviors because of this? And also, are you only expressing love where you feel it is safe to express it that it will be expressed back? Because love is its own gift. We're all connected. And when you love another, you get love all over yourself, okay? And speaking of getting love all over yourself, that's the other half of the first right, and that is to be loved. I sometimes see people that are really good caregivers and lovers, but won't allow that love in to nourish themselves. So this is a cyclical thing. So will you make an agreement with me this week to exercise the right of receiving love? Even if it's in the form of a yummy compliment, nice hugs, um, and I love you. Whatever it is, can you really let that love in? Okay, so that's number one, to love and be loved. Number two is a one that's overlooked a lot, and that is to heal and be healed. Because again, it's the center of our field. It's where we access a lot of spiritual energy. It comes out the heart, down the arms, and out the hands. Your chakras and your palms actually have this energy. You can rub your hands together and feel it. You can just, it's like a cushy feeling. Or you can take your hands and put them on your heart, and you can just feed a loop of heart energy through. Just do that for a few breaths and just feel how your energy goes out your heart, down your arms, through your hands and back into your heart again. And there's this cyclical feeling. Well, we are all healers. And today, even science is showing that just hugs, just hugging, something that we're all very capable of doing, heals people. It puts out, for one thing, oxytocin, which is so amazing for your system. It's the love hormone, and, and it, it reduces stress hormones. And so hug and cuddle and love people as much as you can. And as you're doing it, you're also receiving it, right? And if you're inclined to do energy healing or physical massage or whatever as healing, please do that as well. That's your right. And that's a right of the heart chakra. It brings beautiful things out in others and in yourself. Okay, number three is appreciation. You have the right to appreciate. Some people think it's like something that you, it's like a duty or, or like something that would be hard if you had to do it. It's a right. It's a right to be alive and to see this present moment as a present, as a gift. Nothing assumed, nothing's like, oh, you know, it's really funny, someone said to me once that they got on the airplane and the Wi-Fi wasn't working and some people around them were complaining. And you're up in the air, you're flying, it's amazing, it's a miracle, right? With or without Wi-Fi to be able to go from one place to another. There's so many beautiful miracles, especially in our day and age now. There's just so much going on, so many people and things to appreciate. So start with your family and friends and at the beginning of every morning, 
share some appreciations. You could also write in a journal things you're grateful for, but I really like the connective part, the heart chakra part of sharing with the people in your life appreciations. So your day hasn't really begun till you've uh, appreciated, you've shared at least three appreciations, and if you want the advanced level, share five. Again, appreciation, when you put it out there, it gets all over you. You can't put it out there without getting a little on yourself. <laughs> so appreciate, okay? Appreciation appreciates. That's right number three. Right number four is a big one. And I hope that all of us can use this right. We can exercise it. And that is the right to forgive. Sometimes because our caregivers or people that we learn from held grudges, we feel like we have to. Sometimes we're even holding their grudges. Sometimes there's whole families that are holding grudges against other families or teams against other teams. But we have the right to be free of that baggage. See, so just, just shake it off. You have that right. It isn't any kind of have to, it's a right to be able to forgive. And all you really need to do is just realize we are all connected. We are mirrors of each other. I know personally I've probably made every mistake on the planet, at least in all the lifetimes, for sure. So there's nothing someone could do that I haven't done. So can you come into that humility and, and then forgive for the sake of your own beautiful heart, just to be lighter, to let go. So forgive, that's a right that needs to be exercised. Every single time that you feel heavy in your heart, ask yourself, is there something I need to forgive? That's number four. And then finally, number five, this one is my favorite. Please listen closely, this is so important and so misunderstood. Your fifth right is the right to grieve. Now our culture tends to be so scared of death that we've made grief the scary thing and, and we often shut down when other people are grieving, we shut down when we're grieving. That was an underline. <laughs> and grief is actually a direct, beautiful, sacred access to your heart energy. Because think about it, what is grief? Grief is simply true grief, not, not when we're trying to avoid grief. When we try to avoid grief, it's painful and icky and feels tense and contracted. But have you ever just completely allowed yourself to go into the memory of someone you love who's lost? Or maybe, maybe a pet, maybe even a home or a job. It doesn't always have to be a person. Have you allowed yourself to just fall into the memory of how deeply you loved that person, that pet, that thing? And what a deep loss it is in this temporal world to have this heart and this love that's undying, but the thing itself dies. Oh, it gets you in such deep and sacred touch with your heart and with the preciousness of life itself. Can you feel that? So please, if someone tries to take away your right to grieve, Please don't let them. And if that someone is you because you've learned somewhere along the way that it's not right to cry or feel grief or allow yourself to feel as bad as you need to feel, as deep as you need to feel. When I say bad, it's weird. It's not really bad when you love the grief, but it can feel intense, okay? There's usually a joy. I actually had a samadhi experience in a breakup where I saw like Van Gogh sky. I just had loved so deeply and the breakup ruptured me so completely and I let it rupture me. It was when I was quite young, I was in my 20s, I was in my heart chakra cycle, of the chakra life cycle, and it ruptured me so completely. I remember looking up and just seeing all the stars swirling like Van Gogh's starry night. And I just, for the week after that, I was just in a samadhi. I was in this place of just bliss and openness and psychic capacity that was beyond my norm. So grief is a doorway to your heart, to the preciousness of this life. And I invite you to exercise that right of your heart. It's precious, it really is. <laughs> Thank you for being on this journey with me through these rites. I love you so much, and I will see you on the next video. Blessings. <laughs>